What's up, guys? So I'm in Walmart picking up a few things, like these grapes that I totally remembered on my own. I didn't even have to be texted about to remember. Uh, but I, uh, I do have a story for you guys that I want to tell you. My phone's just about to die. Let's just say it may or may not have involved me inadvertently breaking up a drug deal. So as you can see, my phone did in fact die in Walmart. Uh, so let me get a little story wrap up. Uh, basically what happened is, is I... Uh, was going down and I went to park my car and there was a shopping cart in the parking spot I was going to park in and there were shopping carts uh, on the little island um, where the next parking spot was. So I parked in that parking spot and I was like, you know what, I'm going to be a good Samaritan today. I saw a guy out moving the shopping carts. So like, I'm going to put all these shopping carts in the thing so it's easier for him to get. So I start moving these shopping carts. There's like literally four of them. And so I'm moving one and I'm like, it smells fucking dank out here it's like it's like someone just fucking hit it like in front of me and just blew it into my face and so i'm like moving the second cart and like i go get the third cart and it like just so happened that i looked down into the cart and i saw like a little bag in the cart and it was just a normal like plastic bag it looked like it had been wrapped up and was just sitting in the back corner of the cart like underneath the little part that you'd pull down to put like a kid in and so I was like that's really weird and like as I'm putting that one in and I like come back out to go get the fourth one I notice out of the corner of my eye there's a white expedition sitting there lights off and a dude is just watching me put these fucking buggies up and I'm like I really hope that I didn't just do what I think I did, and I really hope that you're not dumb enough to fucking put your drop in the fucking shopping cart of a fucking Walmart, but I'm just gonna put this other shopping cart up, and I'm just gonna go on my way, like, to the last shopping cart, went inside, um, so yeah, it was fucking crazy. What's up? I got tired of holding the camera, so now I'm holding the selfie stick, and the cat is very interested in it. Well, what's up? Hello? Hello? Do you see yourself? Are you freaking out? Are you freaking out, Smoosh? Anyways, uh, so this anime we just finished is on Netflix. It's called Be the Beginning. Um, which, I'm just going to go ahead and say spoiler alerts. Um, I am going to be discussing a couple of things. Uh, some of which are minor spoilers. I might discuss major spoilers. I'm not sure yet. I'll give another spoiler alert before I do any major. Uh, but minor spoiler alert. Uh, Be the Beginning makes no fucking sense. Because about four or five episodes in, the guy determines that the symbol that the character is making is not a B, it's a 13. Um, which was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool little uh, twist. Um, and that has importance later, um, as well as the rest of his symbol that he makes. And so it was like, why? And they still call the person Killer B throughout the whole show, and it's like, I guess if you've already named the serial killer, it takes you a while to, like, rename him or whatever. But it just felt really weird that you would name the whole anime something that is immediately made irrelevant. Uh, especially considering the name of it that when it was announced was Perfect Bones, which makes, uh, pun intended, perfect sense for the way that this whole anime was constructed. So it's by Production IG. Uh, which has done, like, a dick ton of stuff. The two things that I saw referenced the most often when people were writing this was Ghost in the Shell and Psychopaths, uh, presumably because it deals with the same, like, uh, this, Be the Beginning, deals thematically with sort of the same elements that both of those shows do. Um, sort of all peril for government, shadowy figure organization, uh, police departments. Um, this one felt... I felt like it was pretty close to Psychopaths in the character department in terms of how they had the um, how they had the police station set up, uh, sort of like lone investigator man is like you know so aloof and so brilliant and smart, um, except the guy in this is like absolutely brilliant, like one like smarter than everyone, um, and then you know girl sidekick detective although she also differs from the girl and psychopath in terms of character development but even like psychopaths had like the like super smart hacker girl who sat in front of the computer and did all this shit this be the beginning had this exact same thing a couple throwaway characters a couple characters you're supposed to like uh bond with yada 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 the mythos of this uh anime is 
pretty deep for something that's only 12 episodes. And they kind of rush it towards the end to the point where I hope it gets picked up for a second season. Only in that they left it, uh, they left it up to do a different type of second season. It definitely won't be the same as the first season uh, because the first season is very centered around a specific uh, person and persons um, that uh, wouldn't make any sense for a second season to also be centered around the same people. Um, but there's still a lot of room for development and there's a lot of room to go into the backstory of a lot of different characters. Um, the uh, uh, villain is, um, I don't know why I use quotes, because he is the villain. Um, I guess because there's actually like three or four big bads in this. Um, but uh, one of the big bads is very obvious right out of the gate. I called it like the second episode. Um, one of the other ones is actually pretty uh, smart. It's actually pretty um, clever the way they reveal it. Um, because there were a couple of subtle hints thrown in. Um, but they were like flashes of animation subtle. Um, and so I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And when they finally hit the reveal, I was like, oh, shit. Um, so it did actually get me. Uh, but the pacing's very well done for a for a single core show for 12 episodes. Um, it definitely tackles what it needed to tackle. It definitely answers most of the questions it needed to answer. Um, and it resolves the plot in a meaningful way. Um, there was kind of a major... Okay, here's a, here's a major spoiler. Another spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. I don't know why I'm doing that with my hand. Spoiler alert. Just in case you didn't hear the other three times. Spoiler alert. Um, the ending to one of the Big Bad's storylines is basically seven, right? It's like, what's in the box? Oh, God. <laughs> right? And so the end of the show addresses that, <laughs> where seven kind of didn't. The end of the show addresses that, and the way they address it is like, yeah, the bad guy won. Get fucked. But I didn't actually care about winning or losing. It was just a game. And it's like, whoa! Jump the shark just a little bit. But, like, it was such a... In the moment, like, it's just such a non-issue, I guess, after that. Because, the like, after that conversation, there's, like, half of, half of another scene and then the show's over. So I think it would be interesting to delve into that character's psyche after having... Uh, done that and after having especially because of the the build-up to that particular moment is a lot w well more well done than Brad Pitt's character is so there's a a discernible reason why it's like really unfortunate that he fucking kills this dude so it's uh it's pretty it's pretty interesting, and the character pacing is very, or the character development is pretty good. Like I said, pacing is very good. Uh, the villain's motives make sense, um, and the they go out of their way to explain why two particular big bads that interact with each other have the relationship that they do, and while it's not flawless in its thought process, it at least went the extra mile to say, hey, this is how we think about it. This is what this is how we rationalized it, and for better or for worse, it's there. Uh, so I applaud them for that. The animation style is gorgeous. Uh, it's designed by the same guy who did the Samurai Champloo and Zenki No Terror uh, character designs. So the characters are just fucking great. I could very easily cosplay as the main guy. Um, just uh, fucking gotta cut a little bit of that off. But other than that, I'm good to go. And it also does this strange thing where. And I always find it so funny in anime where they go out of their way to describe one of the characters as Asian and then like the rest of the characters are supposed to be white. And so it's like they have names like Keith and fucking um, Eric and then like this one girl. Her name's also Lily, but she's like, yeah, I'm, I think she says she's uh, half Asian or something like that. And it's like she is drawn a little bit differently. Um, but it's still funny that it's like, they do, th they do this all the time in anime where they'll adopt a lot of Western stuff 
they'll put all these Western things in, but then what they're saying and like how they're acting is still very Japanese. So I always think it's funny because it's like there are some animes where they're very clearly still drawn like uh, like Western people, and they're Japanese as shit, right? So I think it's funny when anime particularly goes out of its way to be like, these people are white, these people are Asian. Um, just a funny quirk. Uh, but like I said, the, the story's great, uh, the animation is great, the uh, pacing is fantastic. Um, the thing that really drew me in was the mythos around uh, the story and around why the, the conceit around why the characters are doing what they're doing. Um, and then the sort of like shadowy government organization is also something that I feel like they could really explore in season two and have like a pretty good, uh, solid season out of it. So yeah, that's my review for, uh, be the beginning. Um, it's great. Like I said, it's only 12 episodes, so it's, you know, two movies worth of footage and you could knock it out in a couple days. I, we did, we knocked it out in two days, watched an hour for lunch and dinner both days. So it's definitely something that I think is worth your time. Let me do an update. Uh, so quick update uh, on today. I uh, didn't go running because I was super sore as fuck. I did a couple job things. In fact, I have a job uh, phone interview tomorrow at 10 o'clock, um, which is pretty cool. Um, uh, and I'm going to bed a little late because got my first duo victory in fucking Fortnite with uh, good old Vishal. Shout out to Vishal. Uh, so now that the update's done, I'll catch you guys later.